Hey guys, I am here with Liz Johnson today and I'm really excited about this conversation. So I'll give you guys a quick intro and then pop into a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. So Liz is the pre president and the principal consultant of Mountain View Marketing and she has a whopping 44 years of branding, marketing, advertising, and PR experience. A lot of different topics right there, but also all amazing. And on top of all of that, she's got another 19 years of website and social media experience. And with all of that combined, she has had the ability to build and leverage engaging and effective brands. And she's been able to watch them grow and expand to insane growth potential and changes and just so many different learning experiences. But she works with a bunch of different verticals and she's worked with companies across the United States. So I'm excited to have her come in here and share a little bit about her expertise. And today we're going to be talking about the top branding mistakes to avoid, which I'm really excited to hear what these are. I'm going to kind of like let Liz handle this one and we will go from there. Sounds good. Thanks, Carrington. I appreciate you having me today. Just like many things in life, it's just as important to know what not to do as it is what to do. So these are some branding mistakes I recommend you avoid. The first is not having a clear understanding yourself of your brand. It's very, very important that you as a business leader or business owner understand very clearly the value of your brand and what your brand stands for. So it's important you don't make that mistake. Not clearly conveying what your brand stands for is another mistake. Many long established businesses say, oh, everyone knows who we are and what we do and what we provide. No, that's not true. The marketplace is constantly changing and it's critical that you are constantly sharing and showcasing what your brand stands for. So don't fall into that trap. The next mistake is one we see primarily with small businesses. Don't revise or tweak your brand in the marketplace. Many small businesses roll their brand out and then they decide they wanna change their color palette a little bit or tweak their logo or perhaps change their tagline a little, use a different font, don't do that. Every time you do that, you dilute the power and the value of your brand. And there's a significant lost opportunity cost associated with that. If after you roll your brand out, you believe that it's really not serving you well or it's not on the pulse of your business as you thought it might be, then rebrand and roll your new brand out. But don't revise and tweak your brand in the marketplace. It's a huge mistake. Another big mistake is not prioritizing responsiveness and outstanding client service. That is an important component of your brand. 73% of all clients and consumers are loyal to a brand because of exceptional client service. So that should be a top priority in your brand. Be responsive and make sure that you and your team are delivering an exceptional client experience. The last mistake to avoid is not investing in creating or leveraging your brand. Some people have the philosophy, if we build it, they will come. Well, that works really well in the movies for Field of Dreams, but I'm here to tell you in branding and marketing, it doesn't work at all. You need to really invest in creating your brand strategically so that it's engaging, effective, consistent, brand asset and value proposition driven. And then you need to leverage that brand strategically where you will connect with your ideal target markets. It's also really important to be authentic and transparent with your branding. Make sure that when you look at your brand in the marketplace, it really is authentic and transparent. 94% of all clients are likely to be loyal to a brand because of transparency and complete accuracy. So that's an important thing to consider as well. When you brand visually and verbally in a very engaging, effective, and consistent way, you fuel your business growth both vibrantly and sustainably. 
Those are huge. I'm going to go back to something you said in the beginning of this a little bit. Um, so you're talking about revising and tweaking versus going through a rebrand. So revising and tweaking being like, oh, let's change our colors, change the tagline a little bit. So what, where's that cutoff point between like, I'm revising and tweaking, I'm in that set, or why do I need to go through this entire rebrand, right? So how do people kind of navigate those two different mediums of, all right, I'm making these changes, do I have to do the entire thing? Like, how do you figure out where you're, where you're standing with that? You're better off. If your brand is not performing well for you, or you don't think it resonates with your target market as effectively as you had hoped, or it's really not on the pulse of your business at this point, perhaps your business has evolved or changed somewhat and, and your brand isn't really reflective of that, do your rebranding and then just roll out the new brand. So pull your old brand in, make your type changes, your font changes, or your tagline change, or your color change. Make sure you make all the changes you believe you need to make in one fell swoop, and then roll the new brand out. So when you go and you do that rollout, is there a good cadence for letting people know that this is happening? Or is it just like, all right, this is who we are, this is who we are now, and then just like, go for it. Or is there a, more of a process that's going to help people be like, all right, this is happening and get prepared for it? It depends on how significant the changes in your brand are. You know, if you're just changing your branding colors slightly, mm -hmm. then just make that change and roll the new brand out. But if you're making significant changes in your brand, then you really want to alert the marketplace that this is your new brand that's really on the pulse of your business and is reflective of your unique brand assets or value propositions. Um, it depends on how significant the changes are. But what a lot of small businesses do is they change one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. They first change this, and then they change that, and then they change this. Every time you do that, as I shared, you dilute the power and the strength of your brand in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. That is a huge, very costly mistake for your business. Yeah, that's it. That's, you've just covered a lot <laughs> very, very quickly. So if people are in a position where maybe they're starting to ask these types of questions about like, should I be rebranding? Should I be changing things? I don't know if I'm going to be doing it right. What are the top three things you would tell people to avoid doing before they even get started? Don't change your brand in a knee-jerk way. Okay. It's very important that you look very strategically and analytically at your brand, that you ask the questions, does this brand reflect my business accurately today? Perhaps, as I said, your business has evolved or changed, and maybe it doesn't. Does it reflect your business accurately? Is it resonating with your target markets? Is it connecting with them? Do they see the value in your brand and your business? Um, what do you need to change if that's not the case so that they do engage in, with your brand and it resonates with them? So do this very strategically and analytically. Um, make sure you don't just come in on a Monday morning and say, you know, I think we're going to change this or we're going to change that. It should be done very strategically. There is a lot of science behind successful branding. Yep. People, many people have no idea the science and the scientific analysis that goes into developing and building and leveraging a successful brand. Yeah, that's huge. I feel like the science behind it is a whole other conversation to have as well. Um, <laughs> it probably I, is. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we could be here all day, you know, just breaking down all these different topics. But um, if people are looking to kind of start figuring this out, they're not sure what to do or what not to do, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you and chat with you? Well, I offer a complimentary consultation. I'm glad to chat with anyone and uh, address their challenges and pain points and goals and objectives and provide some insight and expertise. The best thing for uh, them to do is reach out to me by email, liz at mountainviewmarketingllc.com or call the office 540-675-1201 or connect with me on LinkedIn. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Liz. And it was a pleasure.